Ingram, three carries in a row, and he is breaking free. Across the 30, still on his feet with blockers, and Keontae Ingram to the house. What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another very special NFL Draft edition of Stay Hot, where we're, of course, sitting down with top prospects diving deep into their college careers, their hopes, their excitement for the NFL, and much more. Today, we are joined by USC star running back Keontae Ingram. How are you doing, man? Welcome to the show. Man, I'm doing good, man. Thank you all for having me. It's, it's an absolute pleasure. You know, uh, we love to do a lot of research on guys before we bring them on the show. And when I say we could have an episode just talking about how decorated your high school career was, like legitimately, what, 2017 All-American, USA Today, All-USA Texas, All-District, finalist for Mr. Texas Football, High School Player of the Year as a senior. Like, what? <laughs> I mean, it, it's absolutely ridiculous. You won states um, multiple times, if I'm not mistaken. And, you know, in 2016 or 2017, you had like over 170 yards, two touchdowns in the state game. And, you know, Texas is absolutely is obviously known for having star players, and, and you're obviously one of them. Were there, was there anyone else that you got to play with that you think really stuck out as that kind of caliber? Oh, most definitely. Um, also, I had a lot of family members when I was in high school, man. Uh, my family's from that area, Carthage is that, you know. So uh, my family tree was around a lot. I had my brother. I had uh, other cousins, you know, the Wayland and him, Darren and him. Then I also had some friends, too, you know, Dequavius Bowens and Makai Kobe, you know, guys like that. And uh, Snooky, you know, Amar Brown, all those guys, you know. So uh, we grew up together. And then uh, when our goals was in life, you know, just win a championship. We just wanted to do it. And um, I think way back in 08, that was the first time we won. And I think I was like in the third and second grade. I was like, man, like this is something we want to do, you know. So uh we always said we got, you know, older in high school, man, this is going to be our team. We're going to win state championships and we went out there and did it. So, hey. <laughs> Carthage has a ridiculous track record of success just looking at their records. I mean, since you've left the last couple of years, like undefeated seasons, you know, 14-1 and one seasons. Is, do people like transfer from all over the country just to go play sports there? Or is it all like homegrown talent like you? No, nah, man, it's our homegrown talent, man. I think it's just a South thing, you know, honestly. <laughs> <right>? <laughs> you know, but it's just homegrown talent, man. Uh, everybody who play there, they're from there, you know, or at least in the area, East Texas. So, yeah. Did you ever play That's against, it. play against, you know, NFL guys? Or did you go up against anybody who's playing in the league now or played college football at a really high level or anything like that? I played a couple of guys. Um, let's say, for example, uh, I know a couple of guys that I played against this in the draft process with me. Uh, some of my old high school rivals, uh, Tristan Ebner and Lakendra Van Zet. Uh, we was big uh, highway, you know, uh, rivals <laughs> going up against each other, man. And we talked 365 days, you know, Noah's talking and stuff like that. And, you know, whoever wins gets to take the bragging rights home, you know. So, um, yeah, those guys. Also, I, uh, also scrimmage another guy um, from Marshall, Texas. His name is Chase Hines. Uh, Went to LSU, won in Manatee, so now he's getting ready for the draft. So, I mean, it's always exciting to see that, you know, and fun, too, at the same time. So. Now, football wasn't your only sport in high school. Would would you care to talk about how, you know, being a multi-sport athlete helped you in football to get you where you are now? Oh, most definitely. Uh, just being a multiple-sport multiple, multiple sport athlete uh, challenged me all different types of ways that I feel like football can't take you there sometimes, like it's such as being on the hardware. You know, you see a lot of NFL talent, such as like Drake London going to draft this year, year to talk about like basketball a lot, you know. Uh, and then me being a track athlete, you know, me being a bigger guy, I can, I can run a little bit, you know. And uh, track kind of turn on those uh, sprint mechanics, that explosion, that acceleration, all those things. So, I mean, it just helped my game and all phases. I still like to do some of those mechanic work and uh, some of those hard work, touch work. Like, I just want to be versatile and I add that to my game, you know. So, uh, other sports in high school, they helped me a lot, man. Even though I hated running the four by four, you know, <laughs> and being an anchor, you know, but at the end of the day, it got me where I'm at today, so I can't complain. You hated the four by four? That's the best, that's the best event. <laughs> Ah, uh, I'm I'm a four by one guy, you know. So all right, all right, all right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
going into college, you started at Texas and then ended up transferring to USC, which seemed to be the right decision for you now that you're in the draft process. What went into making the choice to transfer schools? Um, I think just the situation and uh, just who the uh, head coach, uh, just with the culture of the team, just all that foundation, you know, because, I mean, if it's not a foundation there, then it trickles into the locker room. You know, it's like a domino effect, and I want to make sure I went into that type of situation that best fit me at the time, and I felt like USC was that opportunity, so I just took it and ran with it. So, yeah, I'm a Trojan for life. So. Did you? Was there any difference between, like, Big 12 defenses and Pac-12 defenses, or maybe like the philosophy of Big 12 teams and Pac-12 teams. Was there any difference, or was it kind of the same thing and there was, wasn't was too much of an adjustment? Uh, I, I look at football game like this, like regardless of where you're at, I mean, scheme is going to be a scheme. Football is going to be football, just terminology. But uh, from a scheme standpoint, I will say there is a little difference. Uh, you got more one-on-one matches in the Pac-12. You know, uh, that's what the NFL kind of is, matchups and stuff like that. That's why we use Drake London, you know, for example. You know, that's an easy example. Uh, you know, one-on-one matchups versus Big 12, you know, you get rush three, drop eight. You know, a little bit of a different look, but, I mean, it's still football during the day. So, uh, it's, it's kind of a little different, you know. Yeah, just a little bit, a little bit. Did you find the the – Big or the Pac-12 easier? I mean, you had better numbers there, or you had your best season there. Did you find it easier? Or do you think it was more like um, you growing as a player that that influenced those numbers, or was it both? Um, I'm gonna say Pac-12 was not easy, uh, especially growing up in the South. You know, Pac-12 don't get their respect. And uh, before I made the decision, you know, I kind of thought about that a little bit. But at the end of the day, it's on you. And just coming out here playing, man, I didn't realize how like, guys in the Pac-12 can run. Like, they actually can move a little bit, you know. Uh, guys in the Pac-12 are a lot slimmer, uh, different approach to football versus, like, football is a religion for us, you know. So, more ground and pound, lift weights, you know, let's get to a rugged smash my football, you know. But, um, yeah, man, I'm going to have to say, I would say they're the same, man. Uh, Pac-12, it, it shocked me. It shocked me. But, uh, yeah, yeah, i say. I said they're about the same, man. Uh, no difference. Uh, football is football. Thing, and you're coming from USC, and obviously they made a lot of changes this offseason. They brought in Lincoln Riley as their head coach. So the future is very bright there. Is there anybody that maybe the casual fan doesn't know who is like looked really good in practice and is poised to like break out that USC fans should be excited about for next year that sticks out to you at all? Um, Man, it's a lot of players, man. You got uh, Gabe Bryant. Xavier Alfred, um, they call them, we, we call them sticks, man. Uh, freshman safety. You got, uh, the quarterback who just came in. You got the bats who just came in. You got Tooley on the defensive, uh, line, man. And, uh, also a whole bunch of new faces too that I haven't really got to see. Uh, I went out to practice one time, so I really ain't get to see him too much, but, uh, just a few of those guys that I know that I played with last year, you know, some of those faces. You know, so. You brought up Drake London a minute ago, and obviously he's a guy who um, is getting a lot of hype in this draft process. What did you see from him in practice, if anything, that made you feel like you know he was going to get this type of attention in the draft? Um, I feel like he approached practice like you know the game, you know, and that's rare. Uh, he, 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 I feel like he attacked the small things right, such as uh, small talks in the head. You know, some days you don't want to go out there, you don't want to go hundred, but you know you got to exit that voice out your head and go execute. You got to be that person every day. And that's what I seen in Drake. That's when I knew he was a different guy. Uh, he just came out there and just dominated every single day, every single practice with every DB, you know, and uh, he lived by it. So, I mean, to see him in this position, it's not shocking. Uh, I wish he would have stayed healthy. He would have had a chance to maybe win the Heisman, you know, so you never know. <laughs> What was the craziest catch you've ever seen from him? I've watched some film on him and he just like mosses guys left on right in, in on film. <laughs> like was he doing anything was he, I assume it was just the same crazy stuff in practice. Was there ever like a a play you're like, "Oh my god, how did he catch that?" that maybe you saw in practice that people didn't even see in the games? Yeah, um actually USC, I think we posted it with Odell he was like in the back of the uh, north end zone, and he just laid out. And he went to go grab it, man. It was a crazy catch. He had everybody 
at practice going crazy and stuff like that. And then, like, it translates. He did it against Colorado, too. You know? <laughs> he did it, like, so, four uh, times against Colorado. He, he was doing it left <laughs> and right against Colorado. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, I mean, that speaks for itself, man. That's Drake. And talking about you a little bit, not just Drake London, um, when you're out there on the field and, you know, maybe you get into the second level, you make it past the D line. How do you, what, what do you like to do in the open field to maybe get past the safety or get it past that second level? Do you seek out contact or do you think it's a better approach for you to kind of maybe avoid it or, or run around someone or juke somebody out? What's your approach? I feel like uh, I'm good at both of them. Uh, me being a bigger back, got a little shiftiness to him. You know, uh, I feel like that's just my game. Uh, especially when I get to the second or third level, uh, I'm most of the time bigger than everybody, you know, and then I'm just as quick as them. So I feel like I have leverage at that standpoint. You know, I feel like I can run through a guy's face. I can switch it up. I can hit him with a dead leg or a choppy. I mean, I can do all different types of things, you know, so – I look at my game as not being one dimensional and that's just my approach. So when I get in the open field, I don't even know what I'm going to do. I just let my instinct just really take over, you know? So, yeah. <laughs> that's the way to, that's the way to live, isn't it? I mean, you talk about, you know, you're not, you feel like you're not one dimensional. Do you have a favorite running play? Like whether it be power outside zone, um, trap, do you have something that you feel like when the coach calls you, you're like, Oh, let's go. That's, that's a touchdown. Yeah, um, I, w- I would say me getting in the pill school or some type of formation where I'm like seven yards deep and uh, getting like a wide zone, because that, that, that gives me an opportunity to stretch the defense a little bit, put them in a compromised situation, and me building that offensive line chemistry and having that relationship, keeping my distance, making sure I make them right, you know, uh, that's why I love it, you know, and uh, it can hit front side to all the way back side as well, you know, and defense has got to be on point to stop that, you know. And I'm seven yards deep, like I said. So, yeah, I would say the wide zone. Because it's almost like 28 toss. That's like high school ball at that point. You know, just football. So, yeah. Over the course of your career, do you have a favorite highlight of yours, a single favorite, like, play that you've made? Oh, man, I got a lot of plays. Uh, I would say one of my favorite ones would probably be, I guess, Oklahoma State in 2019. I think this was my sophomore year, a check down pass. I, I really – Got got a chance to show a little bit of my receiver capability a little bit. I think it was like a check down, simple check down. And I want to say I made like five or six guys miss and on like a 20-yard game. And uh, I think it was like the red zone. Yeah, it was in the red zone. Yeah, it was in the red zone. So that play, um, it was a play against Bailey in 2019 when I uh, broke like a 60-yard, you know, in the back of the end zone. Going in before, you know, uh, halftime, we was down by seven against Baylor. Uh, just those plays. And also the play I just had this year against uh, Arizona when it didn't count, but it was a 60-yard touchdown. You know, just those big, long, nippy plays, you know, I always stuck with me. You're talking about kind of receiving and running. I was looking at your stats, and I noticed you had one pass attempt in your career in 2018. Do you remember that and how that <laughs> happened? I was That one <laughs> stuck out to me. Oh, man, that was a good one. Uh, that was my <laughs> freshman year in the Big 12 championship. Um, I think I was throwing to Colin Johnson. He currently played for the uh, Giants right now, receiver. Uh, it was a halfback trick pass, and he wasn't open, so I didn't want to uh, throw it to him. Also, if I threw it out of bounds, I think I could have got maybe like a flag or something like that. So I threw it, but I didn't throw it to him. And like it, it stayed in bounds, like it looked like a bad throw, but I like, I did it on purpose. And man, I got a lot of I got a lot of backlash. For that, I, ain't, I, ain't gonna never, I ain't gonna forget that. Do you have any like quarter, quarterback experience at any level? Did you what what did the or like in practice? Did the coaches be like, oh, he can throw it a little bit, or were you just kind of like, let's give it a shot? Yeah. Um, Man, the only quarterback experience I had was in Pop Warner uh, and Pee Wee when my cousin had went down that game and I had to go play quarterback. Just but at the whole time, I just ran. There. I think I like threw it twice. But I, I don't think I ever had quarterback experience until coach was like, "All right, you know, we want to switch it up this week. Different game plan. Show him some different whatever." And he was like, "All right, you know, we're gonna see who can throw the best." And uh, we used to go to practice and just compete and while everybody watching, like. 
okay, let's see who can throw the best throws. And I ended up winning it in practice, but, you know, <laughs> it didn't execute being the I, game. I, so. that's, but that's kind of a high-level, like, decision to recognize that, oh, I can't throw it away. It's going to be probably a grounding penalty. But, you know, he's not open, so let me try and make it look like I'm throwing it to him. <laughs> yeah. Like, that's, that's still, like, a pretty high level. Like, maybe... Maybe you could have played quarterback. Who knows? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm not going to lie to you, man. I tell all my coaches, almost everybody I meet, like, I should have played quarterback, man, especially <laughs> if I knew the game was coming to this. You know, how the game, the ball just in the quarterback hands nowadays, I definitely play quarterback. Man. Yeah. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> now, you, you mentioned that you, you really like having, you know, being deep, like seven yards deep, pistol set sometimes. Do you feel like there's a significant difference between you know being that single back or having like a fullback present or another like lead blocker and you know which one do you feel like is you're more comfortable with at times um i mean it's like this like would you rather run into a wall five yards deep or seven yards deep you know what i'm saying so uh (laughs) that's kind of my philosophy you know just the physics behind it just them being that five yards deep and me at seven, you know, they already put me at advantage. Also, that gives me the best seat in the house, too, you know. And the game's so fast and everybody knows what everybody's doing. You know, you got to be able to read and react. And uh, me just being a little bit deeper, giving you a little bit more time and just all that other good stuff, you know. So, yeah. Your numbers last year were some of the best of your career. Uh, do you think that the upcoming draft and potentially going to the NFL motivated you or do you think you just – uh, had a better opportunity and ended up getting those numbers? Um, no, man, I just feel like that's just me, man. i am always been that guy. I'm the same back. Nothing's left. Uh, I just feel like I got so much on the table to prove and stuff like that. And that's just me as a person, you know. And that's why I took that decision to go to the NFL because I could have went back to college with Lincoln. You know, he had a good combo with me, you know. But uh, I just know the type of person I am, what I bring to the table and the back that I am. So I was like, you know, why not keep going? You know, uh, why not bet on yourself? You've been doing it for this long, so why stop now? So, hey, I took it and ran it, ran with it. And through this pre-draft process, through the meetings with teams, or I'm not quite sure how it works, do you have any kind of estimation on what round you're expecting to get taken on in, or or do you not really pay attention to that kind of thing? Uh, I would know a little bit closer, probably like a week away from now. Okay. It's probably like two and a half weeks, three weeks out. Uh because free agency kind of still going a little bit too. So that's kind of, you know, iffy there. So, uh, but I will say this though, since I started, I have, my stock has been up tremendously. So I am excited. So, yeah. For sure. For sure. You know, everyone has their own opinion about different players. Do you ever get to read your scouting reports? Uh, no, I don't really. I don't really pay attention to that. Uh, all right, all right. Fair, fair enough. I don't. I don't know if I would want to read it. I don't know if I would ever. I, I would feel kind of nervous about reading stuff like that. You know. Yeah, yo. <laughs> no, nah, man. I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't focus my energy on that because I mean it's nothing but a perception. You know, if there's a barrel a hundred yards away, you know, to me it might look black. To you, it might look great. You know, it's a perception. I don't make it right or wrong. You know, so that's why I don't focus my energy into it. You know. So. And what about your skill set do you think is going to make you a steal uh, in the NFL draft for a team? I feel like um, my receiving ability, you know, uh, just me being a uh, mismatch, you know, in the league, in the league, all about matchup. I feel like that aspect, I'm going to uh, stick out. Everybody can run the ball, you know, uh, a few guys can block. I can also do that too, you know, so uh, – I would say my blocking ability and that receiving ability, you know, with a guy with my frame, I feel like that would that would speak out of that. Do you have anybody do you have anybody in the NFL that you watch, any running backs that you watch and and you really like to study and maybe would compare yourself to? Yeah, man. Uh I love watching other backs in the league, man. Uh I don't watch one, I watch everybody. Like I love Dalvin Cook. I like to watch his strap stride patterns patterns, uh his burst. What make him efficient? Uh, I like to watch Zeke. You know, Zeke uh, is a very technical back. You know, you you pause the film and you look at his leverage and his body position, and now you see why he played long so you know for a long time, and why the Cowboys kind of invested into him. Also, I like watching Henry. You know, you got to put the stiff arm in there, and then just watching Kamara with the balance and stuff like that. You know, so I want to take everything from everybody and 
just marinate into my game, you know, mold into my mold, you know. So. I watched an interview with Cook before this one with you, and, and they asked him what his favorite running play was, and he said outside zone as well. That's that's one that he really likes too, so I'm not surprised that he's someone who comes up. His footwork is also just absolutely next level. So, yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And, you know, speaking of, you know, guys at the NFL, have you gotten to – you know, either work out with or speak to anyone at the next level that has been able to give you some advice? Um, I talked to a couple of my teammates that I played with at Texas, uh, Joseph Osa. You know, I talked to Kane Stearns a little bit. He's at the Broncos. Um, you know, just just you guys, you know, what to expect, what I need to get my head to wrap around. You know, even though I am getting drafted in this excited process, I still got to put the work in at the end of the day. So I don't ever want right. to venture off from that, you know. So, yeah, I hit a – I have a couple of people that I used to play with, you know, just words of wisdom and advice. Awesome. Well, it sounds like you're you're going to be very well prepared. We have a few more questions for you. They're just rapid fire off the dome. Don't have to think too hard about it. Very little pressure. All right. All right. So the first <laughs> one is your biggest fear. My biggest fear? I would say it had to be heights, man. Like me getting on airplane, man, I'd rather not sit by the window. And if I am, I'd rather close it. So, yeah, height. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. What about your first purchase when you get your first NFL paycheck? Wow. First purchase. Mm. <laughs> Maybe a decent car. Probably like a Mercedes Benz SUV. Okay. Maybe. All right. All right. Yeah, fair yeah, enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that. What What about a celebrity you would want to take driving in your your new Mercedes? <laughs> like you talking about females in there, right? <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's up to you, man. <laughs> no, no, I'll just mess it with you. Um, I would say Beyonce. Yeah, Beyonce, Beyonce. Queen B, yeah. Queen B, Queen B. <laughs> yeah. All right. What about your favorite movie? Favorite movie? I would say Longest Yards. Longest Yards. Okay. Love that movie. Yeah. It is. You're, you're. I think you're the first person that has said a football movie. Yeah. Yes. I man, I, wrong, I'm man. a. I'm a football junkie, man. I love football, man. I just love it. Yeah. So. As you should. It's a great game. <laughs> All right. So, you know, I hear. I hear music playing in the background. Is that? <laughs> is that music that you're playing or, like, that you're no, listening to? That, I'm like in the lounge <laughs> where I live at, and they just play okay. like the little small music. Yeah. Okay. Okay. What What kind of music do you like to listen to normally? Um, it depends on the mood, man. Um, game days, I like to listen to Lil Baby to have me motivated and stuff like that. Some days I like to slow it down. You know, I might listen to a little slow, you know, 90s beat, 2000s beat. I switch it up. I go throw back here and there, you know. So it just depends on the mood, I say. Yeah. I feel it. I feel it. We have one more question before we get out. We have this bit here that we always have to play on. What is your favorite ice cream flavor? Or if you don't have a favorite, a top three would suffice. My favorite ice cream flavor. I'm going to go with vanilla. I'm going to have to go with vanilla. There you like, go. There you go. Vanilla. <laughs> <laughs> vanilla. I, that vanilla. is the correct answer. That is the correct answer. <laughs> <laughs> Running back one right here. <laughs> All right. <laughs> but, okay, what, what are your thoughts on lemon ice cream? <laughs> Lemon ice cream. I never had lemon ice cream. Uh, I don't know, man. man. I don't think that's my cup of tea. Also, yeah, I can't. No, nah, I can't picture lemon ice cream. But, nah. Okay. Um, I don't think that's mild, my mildly disappointed. That's his I'll favorite leave. type of. He keep, he keeps asking. No, it is it is my third. He's, he's asked everyone. everyone. Yeah. He's looking for some validation that someone else is going <laughs> to agree with him that lemon ice cream is good, and literally everyone has disagreed and. No, no, no. The search, we had, the search uh, continues. <laughs> Some, someone agreed. Was it uh, Alec Pierce agreed? Pierce, didn't did he? Pierce agree? Oh, yeah. Pierce thought it was good. Yeah. Was good. All right. <laughs> He's crazy. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, that pretty much wraps things up for us. Thank you so much for joining us. You know, best of luck to you in the draft. We can't wait to see all the things you do in the NFL. I'm sure you're going to do wonderful things. Shout out to Washman Talent for connecting us with these amazing prospects. And thank you all for watching. We'll be back with tons and tons of content coming to win all platforms. And as always, we'll catch you all on the flippity flop.